What if I told you that SMGs just got a 20% nerf across the board with specific SMGs being nerfed even harder than that? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is happening. You cannot afford to miss this video, so do stick around. It's skill up here with another division video patch. 1.4 is on the way. The PTS is live and data miners have now extracted the full set of changes that we can expect to see going into weapons in patch 1.4. And believe me, they are not small changes. I'm going to go through a huge amount of information in this video, talking at a high level. What are these sort of archetype changes that we're going to see to weapons? What are we seeing to weapon handling and mods? And then I'm at the end, I'm going to talk about the specific changes to weapon categories in terms of their buffs and nerfs. So do stick around. This this video is part of a series of videos that I am providing as part of the 1.4 changes. I didn't want to just gloss over the changes. I wanted to do it all proper, in depth, do it right. You'll see those videos on screen and the uh, annotations, you can click on them when they become available. I'm rolling out those videos in the next few days. If you're watching on mobile, you'll be able to click in the description below. You'll find the links there. But with that, let's kick on. So what's the high level story here? Well, right now the division is not a shooter. It's a straight up RPG. You see an enemy, you, it's like a level 35, you basically have to hold down the shoot button for a good two to three magazines to bring that enemy down. And while you're doing so, your weapon is extremely stable. It's basically like a laser beam. So at that moment, the game just really feels like you're standing there waiting for the numbers to eventually add up to a dead enemy. It doesn't feel like a snappy, rewarding shooter. It doesn't feel interesting. It just feels like you're dropping hundreds of rounds into a giant meat sack bullet sponge NPC, which is not fun at all. Massive said that they want to bring back the feel of a tactical shooter, which is really an awesome ambition because the game desperately needs this. So how are they planning to bring back this feeling? Well, most notably, they are significantly nerfing the amount of weapon handling stats that we are currently getting through our weapon mods. Right now, if I look at how much bonus accuracy and stability I can get on my gear, I'll notice that I can stack like 50 to 60% bonus stability, like crazy amounts. The result are these laser beam like guns, which I've mentioned earlier. In future, you can expect gear mods to have significantly less accuracy and stability on them, which will result in our weapons being harder to handle and force us to make more interesting gear decisions. So let's pause for a moment and discuss this. Why would Massive want to make it harder for us to handle our weapons? That's not fun, right? Well, to be honest, yes, it is fun. If you've played something like Star Wars Battlefront, you know how boring it can be to fire a weapon with no recoil. Similarly, if you've played something like Overwatch or Counter-Strike or Destiny, you know how satisfying it can be to properly master the handling of your weapon and produce really strong play. Good shooters are defined by the relationship they create between a player and their weapon. And a huge part of that is things like accuracy and stability. So by bringing these factors back into the mix, Massive have really brought a huge fun factor back into the game. So other big ticket items, you know how we all have these different types of accuracy and stability now, like initial bullet stability, horizontal stability, stability, accuracy and hip fire accuracy well they are all being consolidated thank god into two core stats stability which now holds all of the values for stability like initial bullet stability horizontal stability and stability where accuracy is accuracy and hip fire accuracy so yeah it's going to be a hell of a lot easier now to understand all of these different types of weapon handling stats and the stability stat is going to be a hell of a lot more powerful since it now houses all three types of stability that we had to gear for separately before Four. Related to the above, the really shitty headshot XP bonus stat has been removed from the game. Again, thank God for that. So that's weapon handling stats, but what about weapon damage stats? Well, these are getting a change as well. First of all, you can expect to find less crit and headshot damage on gear mods and talents. Essentially, it was just too damn easy to stack crazy amounts of crit, especially with pulse, which made it really difficult for Massive to balance the game, particularly in PvP where crit damage can really skew time to kill. So these values are being brought down a notch. Uh, they're also going to be calculated additively instead of multiplicatively. So what does this mean? It means that our damage output won't be quite as spiky. Before, a crit headshot used to multiply your base damage by your crit damage and then multiply that damage by your headshot damage. Now, the game will multiply your base damage by your crit damage and then separately multiply your base damage by your headshot damage it will add those two numbers together and that will become your new damage. Now, don't worry about the math on this. Just trust me when I say it just means that your damage is less spiky. You do do less damage, absolutely, but it's a lot easier to manage from a uh, balance perspective and especially from a PVP time to kill perspective. So it's a very welcome change. 
On a separate but related note, the overall DPS calculation that you see on your character sheet has also changed. But I'm going to be doing a separate video on this because the change they have made is so unbelievably terrible that I actually need to explain it properly to like stop this from happening. It is honestly the worst way you could possibly calculate DPS in this game. So yeah, I'm going to put out something separate on that later. But hey, look, that's what a PTS is for. They're going to make some changes to things. My hope is that they'll definitely make a change to this shitty new calculation. So a byproduct of these changes to create crit headshot damage and the way the damage is calculated is that firearms is going to be a more important stat in differentiating your build. Firearms is getting some minor tweaks, but the major factor is that, you know, all of the other stuff is getting a nerf, like crit damage and headshot damage and all the weapon talents and all that sort of stuff isn't going to be as potent going forward. So if you want to invest in firearms, you're going to get a lot more return out of that because other things aren't as powerful as they once were. So again, this is a good change because firearms should be the most potent means of increasing our DPS, not things like weapon mods or talents or abilities or all that sort of stuff. So that's weapon handling covered off, but what about the actual weapons themselves? Are any of them getting buffed or nerfed? The short answer is hell yes, big buffs, big nerfs. So the data that I'm about to talk about has been data mined by a few key people, Doc Holiday, Spider, and Total. They work very hard to keep our data mining needs satisfied. Huge shout out to them. Thank you very much for your hard work. All right, so let's do this. First up, assault rifles. Well, the good news is that the assault rifle category has survived this patch fairly intact. Only one assault rifle is being changed, and that's the G36, which is again being nerfed by about 5%. Where does this leave the G36, you might ask? Well, it's still in a very strong place indeed, being one of the best performing assault rifles owing to its strong base damage, rate of fire, accuracy and stability. To be honest, the G36 was the clear best in class choice for assault rifles, so I'm not surprised that it's had a little bit shaved off it. So don't worry guys, it's still going to be an excellent weapon come patch 1.4. Next up, pistols. Right, so the reign of the X45 is over. That thing has been nerfed by 40%, which is just fine because that weapon was like twice as good as every other pistol and in some instances and builds was actually better than using a primary weapon. It was clearly broken. I actually suspect that it was uh, bugged the same way that G the G36 was bugged, but Massive just never got around to fixing it. Either way, it's fixed now and it's been brought back down to size. Other changes include the M9 getting a 10% increase in damage and the PX4 getting a whopping 25% increase in damage. So you can certainly expect a lot more variety in the pistol slot come 1.4. Alright, so let's talk shotguns. I know many of you are eagerly awaiting a nerf to the mighty M870, which when combined with certain builds and talents and abilities and console auto-aim can mean free one-shot headshots in the DZ. So surprisingly enough, no change has been made at all to the M870 or to any other shotgun in fact. They are all exactly as they were back in patch 1.3. Now it's important to note that the things that made the M870 really suck to play against was how it synergized with things like Pulse or Booster Shot or Brutal or Deadly uh, and even Century's Call sort of, but not the way that most people describe. It was different to that, but we won't talk about that now. Anyway, all of these things have been nerfed very hard in the upcoming patch. So obviously Massive looked at all these changes in aggregate and decided that, you know, no nerfs were needed on shotguns. And so here we are. So it remains to be seen whether or not Massive were right about this one. So we do need to watch this space. Now, LMGs. What I think, these are actually, I think, the most surprising changes of all. So first up, the RPK is getting an 8.6% damage increase and the L86 is getting a 7.4% damage increase. Now, if you ask me, I don't understand why this is happening because that makes these two weapons way, way better than any other assault rifle. I've actually done a video a while back about why the L86 is in fact the best non-SMG automatic weapon in the game. And now it's been buffed to be even stronger. So yeah, I don't know. It, it's, I'm a little bit confused by, by this. I think it might get tweaked. As it stands, both the RPK and the L86 will completely outshine the entire assault rifle class. So it will be very interesting to see if Massive make further changes here. The big surprise though, the biggest of all, is that the M60 and the M249 variants of the LMG, which are the belt-fed versions, which incidentally include the Hungry Hog named weapon, these weapons are getting between a 25% and 30% buff each. 
Now, this puts these weapons at the highest per bullet damage of any weapon in the game, except for marksman rifles, of course. Now, they do have a slower rate of fire and a much longer reload speed, but they have these gigantic magazines of up to 200 rounds when you put an extended magazine into them. For this reason, I'm going to tentatively say that the M60 specifically, which includes the Hungry Hog, the Black Market uh, M60 E6, the Classic M60, and the Military M60 E4, these are now the best, like the new best weapons in the game if they go into patch 1.4 as they are. Their damage potential would simply be unmatched, and I'm not just talking sustained damage, I'm talking generally speaking, in PvE and PvP, these weapons would be absolute monsters. So please, do not ignore the belt-fed LMGs anymore because these things are about to become very, very powerful indeed. All right, so from the good news to the not so good news. Marksman rifles are set for a very big shakeup. Now, anyone that's been playing this game a lot, particularly PvE, will know that the M1A is the single best damage dealing weapon in the game by a significant margin. I'm talking like 50% stronger than the next best option in any category. It is an absolute beast, but its sun may be setting. It's receiving a gigantic 35% base damage nerf. Ouch. It's a lot, and I honestly can't tell you if it's too much yet, because I need to test one at 229 gear score at the end game with all the right mods to be able to decide whether or not it's overkill. For now though, just know that your M1A is going to be putting out at least one third less damage than it did before. The SVD is also getting minor tweaks, which is a little bit surprising given this weapon's strength was actually its stability and accuracy and not its damage. Uh, it's getting a 5% nerf. Regardless, I don't think it's going to hit the weapon too much. I think it'll still remain a strong option. And finally, the lesser used marksman rifles are getting the love that they deserve. The SRS bolt action family of marksman rifle are getting a 20% damage increase, which actually brings them up to par with the M44. The difference being that the SRS actually has two more rounds in the magazine. The SCAR H variant also got huge love, getting a 28.5% damage increase which now puts it a full 10% higher damage than the new M1A in terms of its per bullet damage. And the SCAR H has twice the magazine that the M1A has. So yeah, I think at first glance, either the M1A has been over nerfed or the SCAR H has been over buffed because right now there just doesn't seem to be any reason at all to use an M1A. I suspect a lot of this will depend on the final weapon handling of the two variants as it's possible that the weapons have been balanced around this. It's a lot more difficult to manage a SCAR H in general, but we'll have to see how this looks Looks at the end game. All right, so that's marksman rifles out the way. Let's talk about the big one, the one that's sure to set my comments section aflame, the nerf to SMGs. So SMGs have always been the strongest automatic weapon in the game, even after they got some nerfs. Their combination of excellent handling, accuracy, and per bullet damage and reload time and crit damage made them absolute monsters. Lately though, they've really fallen out of favor for the simple reason that it's just too risky to get up close and personal with end game content because everything hits so hard. We kind of need to sit back and take cheap shots from far away because getting up close is just asking to be one shot by a shotgunner or even a goddamn medic. I mean, why the hell do medics hit so hard anyway? Anyway, so SMGs, they're still really strong, but we aren't using them at the moment because it isn't safe to do so. But in 1.4, it will be safe to do so because enemies aren't going to hit anywhere near as hard as they do now. So that's going to push SMGs back into favor in a very big way. So I think Massive have seen this as their opportunity to address the long-standing issue of SMGs being the clear best automatic weapon in the game, and they've swung the nerf bat super hard. Almost every single SMG is getting a nerf in the vicinity of around 20% base damage, with some getting even more than that. The PP-19, for example, is going to get a 24.2% nerf, and the T-821 is getting a 23.4% nerf, and the mighty MP-7 is getting a full 31.1% nerf. Brutal. So incidentally, the only weapons getting a buff in the SMG category is the very underperforming Burst MP5 variant, which gets an 11% base damage increase. But to be honest with you, I still don't think this will be enough to make it usable. So these are some very big changes indeed. Uh, Massive have said that they want to move away from SMGs being the best per bullet damage weapon and instead have their power come from accuracy and stability. Since you're using these weapons up close, you'll land more of your shots and you can land more consistent 
headshots, especially given that, uh, you know, LMGs and assault rifles would be considerably more difficult to manage. Whether or not these changes are good honestly remains to be seen. We can't look at these changes in isolation and say 20% le less damage instantly sucks. It instantly makes SMGs unusable. We need to look at it in the context of the hundreds of other changes that are happening to skills, mods, gear sets, enemy health, and of course, other weapons, and then determine whether or not these changes are for the best. While I'm willing to say that, you know, definitely right now, I think the LMG subclass is going to be super strong, I cannot yet say whether or not SMGs are going to be too weak to be used, because I need to do a lot more testing with final end game builds. So watch this space, because I'll definitely be providing that commentary in the future. So let's bring this home. What about weapon talents? Well, yes, they are being revised as well. I'm going to do a separate video on that later, because there's just so many changes, but a number of them have been significantly buffed, like Predatory, for example, which now heals for 50% of your health instead of around 15%, which is a huge buff. Great, great talent now. On the other hand, some of our favorites like Brutal and Deadly are copying huge nerfs of around 50%. Uh, so yeah, I expect some huge change there. As I said, a number of talents have also been removed, but like I said, you can expect a full video on this topic very, very soon. So watch out for that one. So the last thing that hasn't been discussed here is named weapons. And the bad news is that they're not gonna be discussed at all. They still just suck as much as they've always sucked. And Massive have made it clear that they do not plan to fix this in patch 1.4 we will have to wait a bit longer for that. Kind of disappointing, but hey, listen, there's lots of other good stuff coming, so I guess we just have to make do with that. And that is it, guys, my complete breakdown of all the weapon changes happening in the division. As I said at the end of my gear set video, it sucks when you work hard for a really nice drop uh, and then it gets nerfed, but at the same time, Massive are really trying to rebalance their game. They're trying to create a different experience for us. Uh, I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt for now until I get in there and I start testing things and really run the numbers and really see how it all shakes out. Uh, it could be great, it could suck, who knows, you know, but that's the beauty of a PTS as well. We get to give them feedback on what's good and also feedback on what's bad. Hopefully they can fix it up for us. But overall though, you know, like I think there's good times ahead for the division. I'm very excited about how, uh, you know, a lot of these changes, um, especially with relation to the balancing of gear sets and the world tier and all that sort of stuff, you know, grinding tons more gear. Heaps of good stuff to look forward to. So don't focus too much on the fact that your SMG is getting nerfed. I know it sucks. Uh, you know, hopefully it isn't quite as bad as it looks. Anyway, guys, if you like this video, there's plenty more of them on the way. As you can see on the screen here, I'm doing a whole series of videos that break down in great detail all of the patch 1.4 changes. You can click on the screen there to go to one of those videos, or if you're on mobile, you can see the links in the description below. If you like this video, guys, do drop it a like. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe now for end-to-end -end division coverage and the full 1.4 hype train experience. Thank you for watching guys. Take good care and I'll see you in patch 1.4. Bye-bye.